Hey folks, Sheila here from Design Files. In today's video, I thought we would talk a little bit about how you can create all of the individual pages you need to set up for your client presentations using the Moodboard software. So you can actually set up all of your presentation slides, uh, including your cover slide, your table of contents, any of the individual slides in, in between. So slides for your mood boards, slides for floor plans, um, slides for material and finishes. You can set all of this up using the mood board software. So it's not just for creating concept boards and for creating uh, room mockups. You can actually use it to create branded templates as well. Now, the cool thing about that is that once you've created these branded templates, you can actually save them to your design files account so that you can reuse them for future client projects. And that will save you a ton of time. So that's what we're going to cover in today's video. Um, I thought by, to begin with, what I would do is just pop into one of these to show you how I built it out. And then I can show you how you would save it as a template so you can use it for future client projects. So let's go ahead and we'll start there. I'm going to open up my table of contents slide and we'll just go straight into the editor. Now in the mood board editor, we'll just load this board in here. So there's a number of different elements that I added to this particular slide. So I've got my logo and a visual image and some text and a background color. And the way I went about doing this is I first started by adding that background color for the slide. So if I shift this out, you're going to see that this is actually just a large paint swatch. So I used the paint color library within the mood board software. You can go into any of these collections. You can search for a specific color if you want, and then just drag that paint swatch out onto your canvas. You can then scale it up. And I basically used the distort tool just so I could stretch it out and make sure it covered the entire canvas. And once I had that in place, I just hit apply. And in my case, um, I felt the actual paint color was a bit too dark. So I used the image adjustment tools right here to take the transparency down to 50%. So if I pull this all the way back to 100%, you can see how dark it was. So I'm going to knock that back down to 50, which I think is a much nicer look. Now, once I had my background color in, the next thing I did is I decided to include a visual element because really there wasn't going to be that much content on this slide anyway. So I just wanted to add a little something extra just to jazz it up a bit. And the way that you would do that is if you wanted to add any sort of graphic elements or images to your slides, you always have the ability to upload any images you want to use to your personal library. So open up your personal library. If this is just going to be a graphic element and it's not a product, it's just something that you want to use to enhance your design boards, you can jump over to your assets and you can upload it there. The reason you would do that is that anything that you add to your assets, that won't show in any product lists if you're creating any sort of mood board designs. So it just kind of keeps your product list clean of just products that you're recommending for your client. So go ahead and upload any visual elements that you want here, and then you can drag them out onto your design board to build them into your designs. Now, in my case, I'll just uh, pop over to the toolbar here. I'm going to click the crop tool so you can see what the full image looked like. So I actually had this giant image and I used the crop tool to just crop down to this specific section. And then once I had that ready, then I hit apply so I could cover only half of my um, table of content slide. And again, I felt like it was a little too punchy to have it at the full uh, opacity. So I knocked it down to 50% just to soften it up because ultimately this is the main focus of this slide over here. We're going to be talking about the table of contents. Now here you can see that I've added in just filler text for where my logo would go. But if you wanted to add your logo to your slides, and I highly recommend that you do, again, you would go to your personal library, go to your assets, and you're going to upload images of your logo here. So you can drag it out onto your slide and add it in. And then the last thing that I did here is I used the text library from the mood board software to basically add in all of my text to this slide. So you can browse through here and you can find a font that you like. But then just when you find one, you click and drag it out onto your design board. And then when you do that, the right side panel here is going to update to show all of the text settings. So essentially, you're just going to put in something like table of contents or whatever text it is that you want to add. And then here you can, of course, change up the font again if you want. Um, but you also have the ability to change up the color here. So you can use the color fields and pick a color. And of course, if you have a specific color code, you can add that in as well. Now you also have the ability to change up the font size. And of course, if you are creating any sort of lists or anything like that, like I've done here, you can also change up the line height. 
So in my case, I felt like, I think the originally it was something like this and it felt really crammed in. So I just bumped that up to two and a half just to kind of spread it out and fill out the overall slide. And that was essentially it. Um, so they're really quick and easy to build. Uh, one thing that I will also bring to your attention is, if, is that if you're looking for visual elements in the text and visual elements library, if you switch from text to the visual elements, you'll find this. So there's a number of different graphics that you can include within your templates if you want to use these. So be sure to browse through this and then you can have a look and see if there's anything that you want to include. Okay, so once you have your slide ready, the next thing that you want to do here is you want to make sure that you save it as a template so that you can use it again and again. So up here, this is where you're going to save your templates. So you can see that I've already done a number of them, but you would click this button to save as template. Here, you would put in table of contents, uh, slide, and then you would save it. And then by saving it as a template, you can then pull this out for any future project. You can make any minor changes you need to it, but it makes it so much faster for you to just whip together these designs and the full presentation because you're not having to start from scratch each and every time. So you can see here, I've created a number of different templates. And because I've done that, um, I'm just going to exit out of here. I'll save this design, but I'm going to exit out of here to show you how quickly you can pull together your presentations once you have those ready. So let's go ahead and what we're going to do here is we're going to create a brand new project and I'm just going to call this sample. So we'll create a project. I'm going to create my first design. I'm going to go into the mood board software and let's say I just want to quickly pull together that client presentation. So I'm going to pop into templates and I'm just going to grab my cover slide option and it's going to load it in. And here I could just make any minor changes to the project name and this room. Um, and then once I've done that, I can go ahead and save it. And that's my first slide done. So that's great. So once that's done saving, the next thing I can do is I can open up my board panel here where I can add a brand new design to this, this project or this presentation. And then I'm, again, I'm going to click on the mood board option. This time I'll go to templates and now I want my table of contents and boom, it loads in. So again, I can make any minor changes that I need to make here. Maybe there's certain details that I won't be dealing with for this particular project, or maybe I need to add new ones. I make my changes and I save it. And then I can keep making my way through all of these individual branded slides that I've already created. So next up, I might go in and maybe I'm going to include my concept slash mood board slide. So for this one, you can see that it is just a blank slide because ultimately I'm always going to be putting a new product into the upper section here. But what I did want to do is I wanted to have that branded footer so that all of my slides have that same branded element, same colors, all the same positions so that everything looks really pro and polished. Now, if you want to create slides like this, you can choose to either create one generic one. So you would just have something like, I don't know, slide title here. And each time you pull that uh, generic branded footer slide from your templates, you would just update the text here to say, okay, this is going to be for mood boards or this is going to be for elevations. So you could do it like that, or you could do what I've done and you could actually just create individual empty slides for each of those elements. So I have one that's for elevations, for floor plans, for lighting plans, for material and finish, for my concept boards. And the way that you would do that, a really quick and easy way to just kind of set these up so that they all have the exact same placement for everything would be to create one like this concept mood board one. You would save that and you would save this as your concept mood board slide. But before you exit out of the editor, you, what you could actually do here is you could just zoom in here, click on this text, change this to, I don't know, elevation, uh, elevation, uh, drawing and then what you can do is you can click on this little dot here this room slide this over so that everything looks nicely aligned and then go back to templates and then you would save this now as your elevation template right because now you're going to be able to have everything saved in the exact same position so nothing's to be jumping around so you would save it as your elevation one and then again you would edit it and you would come back over here and you could say okay let's do the floor plan one 
So you're just kind of constantly changing up the text here to save all the variations that you need for your individual slides for your client presentation. And again, templates, save this, you would save it as floor plan and then keep saving, uh, saving out all of your individual slides. And that way you can build up a library like this so that whenever you're pu uh, putting together your client presentations, you just select the appropriate one you need and it automatically fills in and it's one less detail that you have to keep customizing each time you want to use that individual slide. Okay, so um, let's see here. Let's exit out of here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one other uh, design board or one other template that you might wanna create. So let's go back to the original. Uh, we'll go into this particular presentation. I'm gonna view this design right here. Now with this particular one, if you like the idea of having a material and finishes slide and you want to use the exact same layout over and over again for all future projects, here's something that you can do. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new design here and I'll show you how I created my material and finish uh, template here. So here it is. Now you can see here that I've basically just included labels for where the um, material and finish is going to be added within the space so you can always change these up depending on what it is that you're going to be adding those materials for but i've also included placeholders for those swatches so the nice thing about doing this and having this as a setup slide is that for any future projects where i'm going to be adding in all of my finishes i can just drag out the finish i'm going to uh, let's zoom in a little bit so we can get nice and close here I'm gonna line this up with the placeholder. You're gonna see those grid lines come into place, so it's gonna help you line everything up. I'll scale this down until it's the full width. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna slide it over to the left a little bit so I can see the bottom edge of the placeholder. I'll use the crop tool, and then I'm gonna slide this up until I have it exactly where I need it to be, apply it. I'll slide this back over here so we're perfectly in line. And if I wanted to just remove that placeholder, I'm just gonna use the layer tools. So I'm gonna push this back I'm going to bring it forward until I have it just behind this uh, placeholder and then I'm just going to delete it. So now I just have that texture in place versus having it layered on top of the placeholders. But it makes it really quick and easy for you to keep that, that perfectly gridded layout and then just keep adding in all of your new finishes and then you can change up your labels. So that's something else that you might want to consider if you like this look. Okay, so I think that about covers it. Um, other slides that you might wanna consider, uh, you might wanna consider adding in something like your project timeline. Again, for this, I literally just went into the visual elements library. I grabbed one of the, the lines, the divider lines that is um, one of the graphics that's in there. These little squares here, these are actually just paint swatches that I rotated onto a diamond shape and then I added text into it. Super simple, super easy to build and then just save it as a template. And then again, another one that I included here was a budget recommendations one. So you might wanna consider that as well. But definitely check out the video tutorial library because there is a video that covers all of the individual slides that you might wanna consider adding to your presentations so that you can really give your client a full picture of what's gonna happen within this project and make them feel super confident, uh, confident and comfortable with moving forward to the next stage of the project. Okay, so I guess um, that about covers it. So if you have any questions at all about setting up your branded templates within your Design Files account, feel free to reach out to us on the live chat. We're always happy to help. And thanks so much for watching.